Okay, we've had a couple of little milestones that I'm excited about. Um, he's uh, he's able to get his feet under him a lot better. And um, his eyes are opening. He's just doing so, so well. So when he starts talking, you know, he's too big for the little Tupperware container anymore. He just kind of falls over. Um, but he's still, he's still just, he just wobbles all around. I don't know how Mama does it. Um, and I'll pull the other one out so you can see him. He's really, he's got little mohawk and this is the, an American bar now. He's really starting to develop that heart-shaped face and the very, very definitive ears. This owl is so different anatomically from the other owls in our area that they have their own subfamily, Titanidae. The um, uh, part of the bay and grass owls. They used to be, um, these guys used to be really common, but their habitat uh, is being systematically destroyed. The old barns and silos are being torn down and subdivisions are being put in the way. So, um, so you know, but we, shoot, middle Georgia, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a, a barn owl nest. Um, but up here, they're, they're pretty uncommon. Now, this one came out of coming. I know there's an active nest in Athens, and there's an, also an active nest up in Calhoun. And they're probably scattered throughout, um, throughout North Georgia. But I'm real, real, real happy with his, um, his progress. And I, I like the fact that he can keep his feet under him. Now, if he just would just get up and start toddling around, um, then I'll know that his, because, uh, you know, that all, all this work, when you take care of an orphan that's not walking yet, you, you don't know if their pelvis has been compromised. I mean, think what would happen to you if you dropped 20 feet out of a tree. I know what you done. You go, all right, let me put your brother in here. All right, you. Now, this one is doing great. Now, I'm still uh, skinning the mice. I'm not giving them any casting material that in form of the fur because um, you don't want to fill their tummies up with stuff that isn't nutritious. And the, the fur, it can't be assimilated into the body as nutrition. So, But it's necessary when they get older and as adults, because that's like fiber in our diet. This is another area where the Good Samaritan, try though he might, he doesn't understand the husbandry involved in keeping these guys healthy. Well, you've got to have the whole prey item. You can't just buy the best ribeye at Publix and expect them to live because then all they're getting is protein. They need the bones, you know, the calcium from the bones. So I've chopped these mice up individually. So they're getting everything except for the stomach and the intestines. But then once they start swallowing whole food, um, you know, along with the fur, are you done? Um, then I will quit, uh, quit skinning them. Okay. That's it from Hawk Talk Headquarters.